Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and we are getting word of what the new fusion is going to be for Raid Shadow Legends as we head into the Halloween season. And I'm going to be reacting to this kit live, giving a first impression to you as we are reading through this champion. And I do also have an infographic for the champion that I'll provide down below that you can pull up and have at your disposal as well. So let's get into it. Alrighty, so as you can see right here, we have got the graphic pulled up for you. And like I said, that'll be down below. But uh, there are a couple things I want to take note of that Plarium has said here. Now, behind the scenes, they are telling us this will start on Thursday, September 30th. So about exactly a week from right now is when the Fusion is actually going to launch. Uh, and then there's something they noted here at the bottom of what they sent us. And it says, please note... That the format of this fusion will be a bit different but already familiar to you uh so just as usual you will need to fuse the legendary champion from epic champions while you need to summon the epic champions from fragments so i think what's going to happen is we're going to have uh, fragment events to get the epic champions but then in terms of actually fusing the legendary you're gonna have to take those epics that you earned from acquiring the fragments and then summoning them through fragment summon then you take those level them up ascend them and then you're going to go ahead and fuse them into sigmund so kind of a hybrid type fusion where playing is going to be trying something new here uh, for the halloween season and they're going to try a mixture of the two type of events so make sure you're prepared for that you're going to need some ascendancy potions and some uh so some champion training ready to go uh in order to kind of keep pace with the fusion and as far as I know, they're not telling us exactly what the epics are going to be. So that will be really interesting if maybe there will be uh, a better opportunity to acquire one of those two epics and kind of sit on those, depending on how good the Legendary Champion is. I actually don't even know yet. I like I said, I'm going to go over this live uh, and get you a, a live first reaction to this. So let's go ahead and go over it right now. We've got Sigmund, the high shield. Really, uh, really looks cool. Love the shield. Love the aesthetics. Uh, and then we've also got uh, an addition to the Banner Lords, uh, which they haven't done for ho the Halloween season. It's usually an undead like Harvest Jack or Elegaeus. But this time we're going to be getting a Banner Lord Legendary that is going to be defense themed and magic affinity. So for the A1, we've got attacks one enemy, removes any shield buffs. That's pretty good. It's not even uh, like a 50% chance. It's just removes any shield buffs. Uh, you are going to need accuracy for that though. Also a 50% chance of removing one random buff and has a 75% chance instead when attacking bosses. That's for the second part there uh, to get the extra effect. Uh, going to be absolute god tier in the uh, magic keep. Uh, so if you're a, 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 an early to mid game player, maybe struggling with that magic keep, this guy's going to be absolutely god tier with the A1 ripping that shield away constantly. Um, so yeah, a, a pretty solid, uh, a pretty solid A1 there. Then we got the A2 is going to be an AOE, uh, attacks all enemies two times. Uh, it says cooldown of four. It can probably be booked to three each hit with a 50% chance. It can probably book up to like a 60 or 70 of placing a provoke debuff for one turn and a 75% chance of placing a decrease attack debuff for two turns. I guarantee that can book up to a hundred. So, uh, we're going to have a pretty reliable AOE provoke and decrease attack that's that's a lot of tankiness because they're going to be doing their a1 and they're going to be hitting super weak a1s typically don't do a lot of damage and on top of that they're going to be getting their attacks stripped away from them so a pretty solid a2 there then we've got the a3 place a shield buff on all allies for two turns equal to 30 percent of this champion's max hp that's pretty solid that's usually like 15 or 20 percent uh, also place a 25% strengthen on all allies for two turns. Now, uh, does this book to three or four is going to be a big thing to know about. I really wish they would show us the uh, the base stats and the books, but unfortunately, I don't know that right now. Uh, that's probably going to book to four. If that books to three, that's going to be a really, really good A3. Then we also get a passive here as the A4. Going to be uh, whenever this champion is attacked, has a 20% chance of decreasing the duration of all buffs on the attacker for one turn or by one turn, and then has a 40% chance instead when attacked by a boss. So, yeah, um, pretty solid because he's going to place provokes, and then as he soaks up damage, just going to kind of get passive value here of having them constantly take buffs away from themselves. So, 
he's really going to snowball in a defensive fight. You're going to be uh, making them hit super weak, CCing them, stripping away any shields they have, and then they're just going to slowly keep stripping buffs off themselves when they attack him after being provoked. So, yeah, uh, we don't know the books and the base stats, which is a big part of the grading needed to know about how impactful this champion is going to be. But so far, so uh, so far, so good. Looks like it's going to be a fun fusion event and something worth most people uh, going after, unless there's something wild that happens with the base stats and the books. Uh, then we also get an aura right here of 40% in uh, Doom Tower battles for defense, which is pretty solid. Unfortunately, usually in the Doom Tower. You're looking for speed, uh, resistance, or accuracy tend to be the most popular three. But uh, but it, it is a big R. I, I wish it would have been, uh, since it's defense, I wish it would have been all battles. If it's going to be like defense, HP, or attack, uh, I think it should be all battles. They should have made that like 30% for all battles uh, on defense, in my opinion. But still a pretty decent aura. So yeah, as I wrap up and, and try to grade this guy based on the information I have right now, which admittedly is incomplete... So far, so good. I would say like an A. Uh, could be a really impactful champion for a lot, of, a lot of accounts out there and could provide a lot of value in the Doom Tower in certain situations. Like, Shield is always a welcome addition to have on those boss fight teams. Uh, Going to be absolute god tier in Faction Wars and also the Magic Keep, which admittedly, Magic Keep is not a huge selling point, but it is nice to, uh, to have that A1 consistent Shield Strip on there for sure. So, yeah, uh, I think I like the potential here. Could be a fun fusion. Looks like a pretty well-designed kit to bring some pretty consistent value to most raid players out there. So hopefully, like they, like I said, this is going to be a new structure of event, and I don't see exactly how it is going to be implemented in game yet, or what the epics are going to be that you have to sacrifice in order to get this guy, or how good those epics are going to be, or if they are current existing ones or new ones. There's still a lot of information we don't have, but uh, so far for first impression, so far so good. And remember, like I said earlier, this infographic will be down below in the pinned comment. I'll make sure and upload that if you would like to, uh, to to get this on on your end and be able to pull it up whenever you would like to look at it or have it as a resource for what is coming in the fusion. And remember, it's going to start in exactly one week, September 28th, and it will be a little bit of a different one, kind of a hybrid of the fragments and the normal fusion events. So uh, that'll do it for this one. Remember, let me know what you think down in the comments. I really enjoy hearing if you agree with me, disagree with me. And how you feel about champions as well because i need to get them added to tier lists and stuff like that but i probably won't add into the tier list until i know the books and the base stat going to be super important to know that stuff so we can try to grade as accurately as possible it's never going to be perfect but ideally you want to have all uh information so you can so you can at least uh do a more accurate job than, than not knowing the cooldowns and and the base stats and stuff like that but let me know your initial thoughts as well and as always thank you for watching have a good rest of your day peace